and faithful guide. And it doesn't matter what life brings our way. He will see us through. We thank the Lord for this wonderful privilege that he have afforded us to be back in the house of worship. If it were not for the goodness of God, where would we be tonight? Amen? Amen. All but the grace of God. And I was thinking as I was sitting there, imagine if we live long enough, the day will come where perhaps physically we will not be able to come to service. So all the reason to come tonight with all our energy, those of us that are here with enthusiasm, to lift our voices up together, to praise God for his goodness to us. Amen? And I know all of us are carrying burdens and have our own share of problems. But, uh, but the time that we spend here tonight, let us cast them aside and lift up our voices to God and sing praises to him. We had a wonderful service this morning, such an encouraging message, the presence of God was here, and we're looking for nothing less tonight but the presence of God. So I'll ask you to reverently stand as we look to the Lord in prayer, we'll call at this time on Sister Karen Christian to come and lead us to the throne of grace, after which we will remain standing for the opening song. Let us pray. Our kind Heavenly Father, Lord God, as the psalmist said, it was good for us to be in the house of the Lord. Lord, we thank you for the beautiful service we had this morning, Lord. Our souls was uplifted, Lord. Lord, we just want to draw nearer and nearer to you, Lord, for we are tomorrow's promise to no man. So help us, Lord, to be ready for today, Lord, for the t- today is the day of salvation. Lord, we just want to bring before you, Lord, all of those that are mourning the loss of their loved ones, those, Lord, that are sick. And, Lord, I especially laid on my heart this evening, Lord, for Sister Des Kelly. Lord, I ask you, Lord, to be with her. Touch her in the name of your Lord. Jesus, just cover her with your love and your compassion, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for what you have done for Sister Lita thus far. I ask you to continue to heal her, Lord, mind, soul, and body, Lord. Lord, we've got so much to thank you for you. We prayed, Lord, and you have answered our prayers for so many, Lord, and we have no less tonight, Lord, to know that you are going to answer our prayers, Lord, in your own time and in your own way. Lord, we just want to be grateful that we can once again come into your house, Lord, where we find a peace that passes all understanding, Lord, that we can meet with you, Lord. Remind us, Lord, that we are in this world, but not of this world, Lord, and we are to keep our focus on you, Lord, from whence comes our strength and our help. Lord, we just want to bring before you the manservant of the night, yes, Lord. Lord. We want to ask you, Lord, to anoint him from the crown of his head to the sole of his feet, Lord. Lord, Brother James gave us a wonderful message, Lord, that we were basting in heaven's glory all day, Lord. And we ask, expect no less tonight, yes, Lord, because... We're going to come, Lord, with a message from you, Lord. Help us to be attentive and supportive, Lord. For every special that's going to be rendered tonight, Lord, I ask you to be, for it to be done to your honor, your praise, and glory. For we are nothing without you, Lord. Help us, Lord, to remind, remind us, Lord, that we are to seek you first. Yes. And you're going to help us in everything that we need, Lord. Lord, just continue to be with us. I ask you to bless and keep the service now, I pray. In your holy name, amen. In standing. At this time, Sister Cindy is going to come and lead us in two congregational songs, starting with number 113. Good evening, everyone. There is power in the blood. Would you be free? from your burden of sin. There's power in the blood, power in the blood. Would you or evil a victory win? 
and please turn to number 285. <laughs> Two hundred and eighty five. Behold, I say unto you, lift up your eyes and look up 
fields, for they are white already for harvest. And he that reapeth receiveth wages, and gathereth fruit unto life eternal. That the whole he that soweth, and he that reapeth can rejoice together. And herein is that saying true, one soweth, and another reapeth. Together. And let us not be weary in battle doing, for in due season we shall reap if we faint not. Amen. Lord, have a blessing to the reading of his word. Brother Lear is going to come now and open with a story. song. Yes. If that isn't love. Sister Jen is now going to sing for us.
Since the Lord gave me peace, heavenly joy never cease. Lord, I give all my life unto Thee. Guide my feet, hold my hand, grant with Thee I may stand for You. song. At this time, we will pause uh, to take your special prayer request. Um, before we begin, I'd like to ask special prayer on behalf of Pastor Edlin Soto and Cox and Hole, who really needs our prayer. Uh, we'll begin with this side. Yes. Thank the Lord. Okay. Decide anyone. Yes. Sister Dead Skell as well. Let's remember her in prayer. Thought form anyone? Juan Vinica. Okay. Those for unspoken requests? I'll ask you once again to reverently stand as Sister Kathy McLaughlin come and lead us to the throne of grace. Please also remember to pray for the offering as well. What a mighty God we serve. Angels bow before him, and heaven and earth adore him. Almighty God, because we know that you're all power in earth and in heaven, dear Father, we come to the throne of grace only through the name of Jesus Christ, dear Lord. Knowing, Almighty God, that you are able, dear Lord, to answer every prayer request that was mentioned this evening, dear God. Because there is power, dear Lord, in your name, dear God. There is power, dear Lord, in your presence, dear God. There is power, dear Lord, in your wings, dear Father. And we know, Almighty God, you can heal, dear Lord, to the uttermost. Almighty God, you have heard of Sister Des' children, dear Father. We pray, Almighty God, that you may visit these children, dear Father, and that you may heal their bodies, dear God. Whatever it may be, dear Lord, may you heal it, dear God, whether it is physical, yes. spiritual, mentally, or psychologically, dear God. She's asking healing for her children, dear God. We pray, dear Lord, for Sister Bev and her request for her family, dear Lord. They believe, dear God, that you are a God of the universe, dear Lord. And there is no corner, dear Lord, on this earth, and your air cannot reach their father. And you can listen and you can heal them wherever they are, dear God. Oh, Almighty God, you see behind every uplifted hand tonight, dear Lord. There's a deep concern, dear Father, and there is a need. Almighty God, while we are yet speaking, dear Father, and while we are silent, dear Lord, you are answering prayer, Praise dear God. And we are so thankful, Almighty God, that you are that mighty God, the one that liveth forever and ever. Amen. The one who heal in the days of old and the one who will heal now, dear God. 
So, dear God, we are committing everything into your hand, dear Father, because, dear Lord, you are able. So, dear God, touch these bodies, dear Father. Remember Sister Des Kelly, dear Father. We pray, dear God, wherever she is right now, dear Lord, that you may touch that sister's body and heal her, dear Father, physically, spiritually, mentally, and psychologically, dear God. And for the many, dear Lord, that have been taken down with this horrible disease among yes, humans called cancer, dear Father. With Almighty God, there is no disease that come unto man that you cannot heal, dear Father. So we pray, dear God, for every victim that has fallen under this cancer, dear Lord, that you may remove it from their body and that you may give them a testimony, dear Father, that the world may see your good work, dear Father, yes, and glorify Lord. you, Almighty God, which is in heaven, dear Lord. So, Almighty God, whatever disease has come unto us, dear Father, whether it is blood pressure, arthritis, dear God, cancer, whatever the disease is, dear God, you, Almighty God, can heal. And you say we must ask and it shall be, we shall Praise receive, dear Lord. God. And we must seek and we shall find, dear God. And we are knocking, dear Lord, because, Father, we know healing will open unto us, dear God. So heal this evening, dear Father. Remember the children of these islands, dear God, in a very, very marked way, dear God. I pray, dear Lord, that you may... Pull them to you, Almighty God, because we know, dear God, that you love the little children. And even we as adults, say we ought to come to you as Amen. little children, dear God, yes. without wavering, dear Father, yes, because their faith is in you, dear Lord. So we pray for the children of these islands, dear God. Oh, Almighty God, remember our pastor tonight, dear Father. No, Whatever you have laid on his heart, yes, dear God, Lord. anoint him, dear God, from the crown Amen. of his head Amen. to the sole of his feet, dear God. May he speak as an oracle yes, unto you, Lord. Almighty God, giving us the message that you have laid on his heart. So, Almighty God, wherever the Spirit of God is, there is liberty, Praise dear the Father. Lord. And may your spirit lift a standard against every plan of the enemy, dear God, this night, dear Father, and render him powerless, dear Lord, yes, that we may bask, dear God, Amen. in your presence once more, dear Father. Father, you have given us hands to labor, dear Father. You have provided jobs for us, dear God. And we are so thankful, dear God, that we can give back to you what you rightfully deserve, dear God, because it's through your grace and through your mercy, dear Father, that we have what to give. But we pray, dear Lord, for the very unfortunate that doesn't have a job. May you share the bounty with them, dear God, that they too may have jobs, dear Father, and that they can provide, dear Lord. So bless this congregation tonight, dear Father. Be with each one, dear Lord. Lift them up, dear Father, and help them, dear God, to look up, dear God, to you, Almighty God, not looking to the right nor to the left, but to stay focused on you, dear Father. And we give you thanks in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. There will be a young people meeting this coming Wednesday night at 7 p.m. And we would like to ask you to please invite as many as you possibly can to come back and be with us in that service. You never know what has been planned. And uh, you can only receive a blessing if you're here. So please make plans to come and be with us on Wednesday night. And, of course, our regular service this coming weekend. At this time, Sister Cindy is going to sing for us, and the choir will close out.
Praise the Lord. We thank the Lord for this wonderful sound service. Although it's been a bit quiet, but we thank the Lord we feel his presence here. Now, it seems like a bit of a sleepy service. I'm asking you to please wake up a little bit tonight. Prepare yourself for the message. We still got a little ways to go. When we get home, we can rest. For now, let's give our all to the service. We're so thankful to have Brother James out with us tonight. We thank the Lord for what he's been doing on his behalf. We know that it's been a rough road, but we know that God has been with him. So as he come and be, bring the word to us, let us lift him up in our prayers, that the Lord will bless and inspire him as he bring to us what God has laid on his heart. Brother James. I'm very thankful to the bank service tonight. To those of you that are here, and as Brother James just said, I wouldn't mind if you Give me very close attention for another few minutes. Don't go sleep on me. Not going to be long. Thank the Lord for his goodness. And his mercies extended to us. As he said that we were able to be back here tonight. And to see those of you that are here. It could be more. But it could be a lot less. It could be a lot less. And I would like to speak to you tonight on a question. Can we know life at its best? Yeah. Hmm? Big question. Amen. Yeah. Now what I'm referring to is now natural life. I'm referring to the physical life, the natural life that God gave us. The spiritual life when people get saved and give their lives to the Lord, that enhances yeah. their physical life and their, their lives, but God gave us this one life. And it is my firm belief that he did so with the intention of enjoying it and making the best out of this. I'm going to read four verses of scripture taken from Psalms 37. Psalms 37. Fret not thyself because of evildoers, neither be thou envious against the workers of iniquity. For they shall soon be cut down like the grass and wither as the green herb. Trust in the Lord and do good. So shalt thou dwell in the land, and verily thou shalt be fed. Delight thyself also in the Lord, and he shall give thee the desires of thine heart. Commit thy way unto the Lord. Trust also in him, and he shall bring it to pass. Uh, and he shall bring forth thy righteousness in the light and thy judgment as the noonday. Rest in the Lord, the Lord and wait patiently for him. Fret not thyself because of him who prospers in the way, because of the man who bringeth wicked devices to pass. I'm going to stop there. May the Lord add a blessing Amen. to his holy word. I said a while ago that I believe God intended for mankind to make the best out of this life. Yes, sir. And that may be easier said than done sometime. I know that. I know that. But what we must always remember, that we don't go through life in a rocking chair. Right. And just walk our way through it. Right. That's not how life is. We've got to fight through life. We've got to battle through all kinds of things. Life is life. Yes, life is life. And, you know, um, the Bible tells us God created everything. Huh? Everything. You see here, he created. 
the prickles and the roses, the iron shore, and the smooth ground. Everything God created. Everything God created. But thank God that he gave us a mind. God created mankind with an intelligence. And the life is the will to live. If you see how pe some people in this world tonight have to struggle to survive in physical life, the natural life, we couldn't take it. We, couldn't co we can't comprehend that. You know, I see people today, even around here in Cayman, with big lovely houses to live in, big beautiful cars to drive, nice clothes on, a good job, do owe no bother nothing, free from debt, and don't seem to enjoy life. You must enjoy it. Now, I'm going to tell you, I don't like to bring myself in, but I enjoy life. I love life. From the time I was a small child growing up here in Georgetown, I couldn't wait till daylight broke to get outside. We were raised in nature. That's all we knew. We didn't have any computers or cell phones or televisions or nothing like that in those days. All we had was nature. But we enjoyed it. We, we lived it. You know, what you, what you don't, what you don't know anything about, you don't miss. Huh? We didn't have any air conditioning. So we didn't know what it was to miss it. Huh? We didn't have any running water. So we didn't know what it was to have running water. You had to dip it up. Come on, church. Huh? So I have always loved life. And whatever comes to us in life, we must enjoy life. Don't let that frustrate us and turn us back. God gave us a one life to enjoy. I believe it's God's will tonight that every human being live a happy life. That's my personal opinion. Life is a gift from the Almighty God. Life originated in God. Yes, life originated in God. The Bible tells us Jesus Christ is the author of our, our, our faith. The author and finisher of our faith. Your spiritual life begins with Jesus. And you're going to end with him. Yes. But life is a one cycle journey. Hmm? It's a one cycle journey. For one time and you're gone. That's why I always tell the church here, enjoy the trip. And, and to make it better yet, get on board the old ship of Zion. Come on, church. Get on board the old ship of Zion and enjoy it even better. God got more for us than we think. Let me tell you, a lot of people think that Christians are missing out on life. What are they missing out on? What are they missing out on? Christians are missing out on a thing. No. So it is man's most precious possession, you know. The Bible says, all that a man hath will he give for his life. Yes. So under normal circumstances, life craves to live. Normal circumstances, life craves to live. God designed it that way. However, the perfect plan, don't misunderstand me now, the perfect plan was marred. Life then met with opposition and obstructions because of the enemy yes, that came into the world. He doesn't want anybody to enjoy life. That's, right. That's why he's so disruptive. Amen. That's why you don't listen to the devil. He's not going to tell you anything good. Amen. He don't want anybody to live a whole life. You see where the world is? Yeah. The, 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 the Christianity is on the siege. Yes, the sir. devil doesn't want anybody to live good. It is his plan to try to extinguish the church from the face of the earth. Sure. That's the devil's plan if he can. You know what I tell people all the time? Greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. That's a wonderful thing to remember every day you wake up. Yes, every day you wake up. So the devil introduces all kinds of things in our lives. Yes, fear, fear, worry, 
Anxiety. All these things that discomfort our life. Let me tell you, you gotta, you gotta, you gotta shake them off. Yeah. It's tough sometimes, but we gotta shake them off. Yeah. So, being subjected to the bondage of evil and so on deprives one of life at its best. Deprives one of life at its best. Amen. Having all we want materially is not life at its best. No. Hmm? Amen. no. It's not life at its best. No, I see people with nothing. nothing. Almost nothing. nothing. No money. Right. Just as happy. <clears throat> and seem to be enjoying life. Amen. More than so many others. Some, somehow so much to live on. And they say they're not going to have to live for. You understand what I'm saying? So... God has provided a way for us to know Him. That's knowing life at its best. Huh? The 37th Psalm is a well known Psalm. Yes, it is not a Psalm of praise, it is a sermon of instruction. It's a teaching Psalm. And if you notice, it's a Psalm of David. And the main scope is to forbid us fretting at the prosperity of evildoers. And reasons why we should not. No, I'm, I'm sorry, but the world is evil. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. A lot of evil in this world. And some people see that way. Look at how evil they are and look what they got. And they're living good and not got nothing. That's a trick of the devil too. Don't worry about that. That's the Bible says stop. Don't worry about it. Fret not thyself because of that. Huh? That's what he said. And so it counsels us to live a life of confidence in God, which will prevent that fretting. Look at verse 3. Trust in the Lord and do good. So shalt thou dwell in the land. Trust in the Lord and do good. So shalt thou dwell in the land. Ask God to supply our needs and leave the rest to Him. You know, it is, yes, it, it, it is promised that we will be provided for in this world. Hmm? It is promised that we will be provided for in this world. I've been here for almost 80 years in Georgetown. And I will start one day. Now we we'll start one day. God provides. What a blessing. God provides. Let me tell you, we need to keep close to God. We need to keep, keep close to God and honor Him. Because sometimes we might need more than others. And it says, And verily thou shalt be fed. That's the last part of verse 3. Yeah. Verily thou shalt be, shalt be fed. We must make God our heart delight. Yes, yes, and then we shall not have our heart, and then we shall have our heart desire. Yeah. Delight. Yes. Delight thyself. Yes. Also in the Lord. Delight thyself. Enjoy God. Enjoy our service to Him. Delight ourselves in Him. And He shall give thee the desires of thine heart. The Bible has all kinds of things to say about promises. Yes, let me tell you something, friends. God is real. He's just as real tonight as He ever was. Yes, He's just as real tonight as He ever was. Uh, the story is told of an agnostic who found himself in trouble. Right. And a friend suggested that he pray. How can I pray when I do not know whether there's a God or not? Yeah, he asked. If you are lost in a forest, 
His friend replied, You do not wait until you find someone before shouting for help. Hmm? Oh, you would need a you would need a shout. Thank God, blessed are those who believe. Huh? Blessed are those who have not seen yet believe. Jesus told Thomas. Thomas doubted the story about Jesus, you know. Thomas doubted that. Unless I see the print of the nails in his hand. And it's pierced in his side, I will not believe. Huh? Yes, that's what he said. Yeah, so spread thy case before the Lord. Yeah. Whatever your case may be, always. Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. Spread it before the Lord first. Yeah. Yeah. This same David said, I have, I, 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 I have placed the Lord always before me. Yeah. This same David. Yeah. I have placed the Lord always before me. That's what he did. Never forget God. No, never forget God. Then trust him with the with full satisfaction that all is well that he does. We must subscribe to infinite wisdom, the promises he shall bring it to pass. Look at the, the, look at, um, the latter part of verse 5. Commit thy way unto the Lord, trust in him, all to in him, and he, shall bring it Amen. to pass. Do you know that God surprises us sometimes? Yes. Do you know that God surprises us sometimes? Yes. Do you know sometimes you don't know what God will do for you? Until you ask Him. Until you reach out to Him. God still works miracles. Yes, God still works miracles. I just had a big miracle performed for me. I don't tell the people these things. I just had a big miracle performed. I couldn't believe it. Amen. God works miracles. Yes, Amen. You must acknowledge Him. What are you going to do? Praise the Lord. Thank God. Hmm? So if your car tire go flat, don't sit down in the car and say, well, pump up. <laughs> you got to get outside and screw it off and change it. Hmm? He shall take care of you. That's a song we always sing, used to sing. God will take care of you. Used to hear that years ago on the radio station overseas, remember? Them days never had no radio station. I used to hear it all the time. God will take care of you. But it was a popular song. Well, verse 6 says, And he shall bring forth thy righteousness as the light, and thy judgment as the the noon day. I read verse 7. Rest. Rest in the Lord. Let go and let God. So, some of us are trying to fight this in ourselves. The battle is not yours but God's. That's who the battle is. The battle is not yours but God's. God is the one that fights the battles. Yes. We got to get have, have him fight it for us. We can't fight this alone. No. Rest in the Lord and wait patiently for him. Trust in the Lord with all thy heart. And lean not on to their own understanding. All the, your ways acknowledge him. And he shall direct thy path. Those who trust in God are kept, you know. Yes. The, even it, I, I mentioned fear. You know what the Bible says? Look at Isaiah 12. Isaiah 12. And verses 2 and 3. Behold, God is my salvation. I will trust and not be afraid. Huh? For the Lord Jehovah is my strength the Lord. and my song. 
He also is become my salvation. Therefore, with joy shall he draw water out of the wells of salvation. Yes. That's what it says. Delight thyself in the Lord. People worry about slipping, slipping back and leaving and slipping out of the hands of God and turning back and all those kind of things. Such a thing should never enter our mind. Huh? Such a thing should never enter a Christian's mind. Regardless of how rough it gets. When you think it rough, remember Job. You think you got it rough? Remember Job. Remember Jesus. Consider him that endured such contradiction of sinners against himself, lest we be wearied. And feed our mind. Look at what Jesus went through. The Bible said he opened out his mouth. When he was reviled, he reviled not again. A perfect example. Jesus was a perfect role model for us to follow. And if you look in Psalms 26, you will see a verse of scripture there in verse 1. Judge me, O Lord, for I have walked in mine integrity. I have trusted also in the Lord, therefore I shall not slide. Huh? Don't slide. Sin is a slippery thing. David said he brought me up out of the mire clay. Huh? And set my feet upon a rock. That's what he said. Same David. And he established my goings. The same David. The mire clay of sin. Sin is slippery. Sin is deceptive. Yes, and unfortunately, the world do think anything is sin now. Don't look like. People are saying nothing hardly wrong. Nothing hardly is sin. Everybody's on their way to heaven. Regards who what so 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 everybody's on the way to heaven. You ever notice it? What happened to God? What happened to God's way? What happened to what God said? That's what the world says. But I know what God said. The Bible is still written. Those that trust in the Lord shall have perfect peace. Now I'm reading. I'm reading the Bible. And you can look at Isaiah. Isaiah 26. Isaiah 26 and verse 3. Thou wilt keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on thee because he trusteth in thee. You know God gave us the ability to understand when we got enough of some things. When he got enough of some things. Take, take, drop it. Eh? If you're overpressured, tell your boss, I can't handle this. Get more help or I go in. You guess you can get enough. You can get enough. People can get beat down enough. Hmm? People get beat down, all the beating down on. People beat down on them. Criticizing them. They ain't no good, nothing to do any good. That's bad, you know. But people go through that. Let me tell you, there are more ways than get rid of somebody than one. Even, even in the job market. Yes, you can believe what I'm saying. People can make it so tough on people that they got to move on. For their own good. And for their own benefit. That's why when you see people divorce, don't be too quick to criticize them. Because you don't know. You don't know. Hmm. You didn't live in it. Let me tell you, some people can get enough. You can get overwhelmed. David said that too. When you get overwhelmed, there's only one place you can go. Lead me to the rock that is higher than I. Slow down and rest in the Lord. When you get overwhelmed, rest in the Lord. You can take enough. Let me tell you. 
So there, there are reasons why we should trust, you know. Hmm? If you go back to Psalms, again, Psalms 36, you will see a scripture there. Psalms 36 and 7. How excellent is thy loving kindness, O God. Therefore the children of men put their trust under the shadow of thy wings. Then shall they, then shall, they shall be abundantly satisfied with the fatness of thy house. And thou shalt make them drink of the river of pleasure, thy pleasures. For with thee is the fountain of life. In thy light shall we see light. The fountain of light. Oh yeah. The fountain of light. So God gave us this life to enjoy. Amen. And when you turn your life over to the Lord, it should be more enjoyable than ever. Amen. You got more to rejoice over then than you had before. Because you, your soul is at ease. Your soul is at rest. No more condemnation. You're set free from, by God. There is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus. Who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. People, people fight against God all the time. And never develop an attitude of trying to find God. So, we see that in his kindness. His word is unfailing. Hmm? You ever read his word? You know what it says? St. Luke chapter 21 and verse 33. Heaven and earth shall pass away, shall pass away. but my words shall stand forever. Because the reason why we should trust in God because he cannot lie. Huh? Yes. He cannot lie. Yes, no. So going back now to Proverbs. What I read here tonight was from Psalms. Mm -hmm. But if you look at Proverbs chapter 3. <coughs> Proverbs chapter 3. And verses... Five and six. This is where we find this. Verses five and six. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not unto thine own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him and he shall direct thy path. Amen. Think on what you can have tonight right. in this present life. Yes. You can have power. Yes, sir. Huh? Yes. Jesus said Jesus, Jesus said in the book of Acts you know and he I'm speaking of, referring to the Holy Ghost and he shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost is come upon you. Huh? And ye shall be witnesses unto me. We sang a song here tonight. Sang about that, the power and the blood. There is still power in the blood of Jesus. Hmm? He has not lost his power. Yes, he has not lost his power. We can have all kind of things by knowing the Lord in this life, you know. And Psalms 100, 100. I quoted some out here this morning. Yes. If you look at Psalms 100, it says there in verse 2, Serve the Lord with gladness and come before his presence with singing. Huh? 
You know, some people live with a certain hen. You know what a certain hen is? Always on the fighting side. Always on the fighting side. Don't seem to enjoy a minute of life. Everything is dark and gloomy. Everything is um, everything is negative. I tell people all the time. You know, somebody called me every morning and asked me how I'm doing. I say I'm thankful for another day. God gave me to live. The sun is shining. Huh? It's a beautiful day. He gave it to me. It's up to me. What I do with it. I have to enjoy it or not. It's up to me. Yes. Thank God for what he has done for us. We can have prosperity. Yeah? You know what prosperity is? Look at Matthew 6. Matthew 6 and verse 20. Hmm? Matthew 6 and verse 20. But lay not up for yourself treasures upon earth, where moth and rust doth corrupt. That's 19. But lay up for yourself treasures in heaven, where neither moth nor rust doth corrupt, and, and where thieves do not break through and steal. For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. Yes. Thank God. And everyone who live it for him, everyone who take the time to live this life for the Lord, will enjoy a promotion. Hmm? Amen. Huh? Yes, sir. You believe in it? Yes, sir. Yes. Praise the Lord. You'll enjoy a promotion. Yes. Higher up. Yes, and God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes. Yes. Revelation 21 and 4. And there shall be no more death. Yes. Neither sorrow. Glory to God. Nor crying. Amen. Neither shall there be any more pain. For the former things have passed away. You know, sometimes you get to the place in life, sometimes in circumstances, you never dream you would be. Right. And you feel like if you would scream till daylight, you would scream if that would help. But that won't help either. No. Rest in the Lord. Praise the Lord. Relax in the Lord. Three things will make life worth living. A self fit to live with, a faith fit to live by, and a purpose fit to live for. Amen. Thank yes, God for a purpose. Yes. Dare to be a Daniel. Yes. Dare to stand alone. Yes. Dare to have a purpose form, yes. and dare to make it known. Praise the Lord. Daniel had a purpose, yes. and he fulfilled it. Yes. Huh? And he refused to eat and drink yes. what they wanted him to do. Because it was against his dietary laws. Yes. Let me tell you, friends, as I mentioned here this morning, when we, when we please God, we're going to have the favor of God yes. upon us all at all times. We can't drop this and expect to please God and expect to have the favor of God. We can't drop the church standards. And expect how the favor of God upon us. It's not going to work. Amen. It's not going to work. No, sir. Amen. So live it. Live life to its fullest. Amen. If you're not going to bread in the cupboard tomorrow morning, ask somebody to pray with you. See what God will do. Hmm? See what God will do for us. God still works for his people. He told us to do that. Of course, that's probably not the case here in Cayman. Everybody got something to live on. But we need to have more than live on. We've got to have something to live for. Amen. Amen. Greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. We're going to sing, I don't suppose it's the altar call song, but we're going to sing it. 
It's been on my heart all day. We're going to sing it from Redemption Song Book, number 614. Think about this. This is a testimony for a Christian. This is a Christian testimony. Yes, sir. I was once far away Amen. from the Savior, and as wild as a sinner could be. And I wondered if Christ the Redeemer could save a poor sinner like me. Let us stand. Sing it. Anybody need some help tonight? The Lord speaking to anybody. The altar is open. I was once far away from the Savior And as wild as a sinner could be And I wondered if Christ the Redeemer Could save a poor sinner like me I wandered on in the darkness not a ray of light could I see and the thought filled my heart with sadness there's no hope for a sinner like me. And then in a dark, lonely hour, come on, church. In that dark, lonely hour, a voice sweetly whispered to me, saying, Christ the Redeemer has power. <coughs> I listened. Come on, church. Listen and long was the Savior that was speaking so kindly to me. I cried, I'm the chief of sinners. I cried, I'm the chief of sinners. Thou can't save a poor sinner like me. I then fully trusted. I then fully trusted in Jesus. And oh, what a joy. Come on, church. Oh, what a joy came to me. What a joy came to me. My heart was filled. Praises for saving a sinner like me. For saving a sinner like me. No longer in darkness I'm roaming. No longer in darkness I'm walking. For the light is now shining on me. And now unto others I'm telling how he saved a poor sinner like me. And when life's journey is over, and when life's journey is over, and I that their Savior shall see. I'll praise Him forever and ever. For sin a sinner like me. Praise the Lord. Thank the Lord for such an encouraging message. Thank God one day when that promotion comes. 
will leave all these earthly troubles behind and will bask in the presence of our Lord forevermore. Amen. Amen. Save to sin no more. What a glorious day it's going to be. For some of us, it will be a glad reunion day. I'm looking forward to seeing some loved ones up there. But until then, we, we must keep on traveling on. And as Brother James admonished us, let's enjoy the trip. It's a one-way ticket. Let's enjoy it. Come what may, let's enjoy it. Don't let the devil steal your joy. Let us continue to pray for one another and encourage each other. Sister Desiree Ebank, would you please lift your voice and close in prayer. Yes. Amen. Amen. Good night and God bless.